Um, well, my name is Nick Hanford. I've been uh, working in the adaptive field for since 1999. I actually have a severe case of dyslexia. Um, I think it's actually kind of one of those interesting situations where um, I think several people in the webinar can relate, but it's kind of an invisible disability. Some of the people I work with have no idea I have a disability. Um, so many of the people that I've socialized with have no idea. Um, so it actually often creates a lot of social anxiety as well. You know, I mean, I still as an adult have concerns about going in and playing a board game or something like that with friends and family because those are things that cause issues, um, you know, and a lot of people then uh, have pre-existed ideas of me then afterwards. Um, I'm officially illiterate by U U.S. standards. Uh, I was tested my senior high school. I had a first grading level, first grade spelling level, and a second grade comprehension level. Um, I actually graduated from college in three and a half years with dual degrees with highest honors. Um, and when I was tested at the end of the education, I actually increased my reading spell spelling level by two grade levels, my comprehension by 13 grade levels. And most of that had to do with the fact that during college, I was introduced to adaptive technology. So a lot of the things I did in college is everything that I had to read was auditorily read to me using multi-sensory programs such as Kurzweil 3000, um, Read Write Gold. Um, there's all kinds of different programs out there now. Back in 99, there wasn't a whole lot of options. Uh, Kurzweil was the one I stuck to, but now there's all kinds of free apps, uh, computer systems that just read to you. Um, my iPhone is set up so that it reads everything back to me and I get auto feedback. Um, I learned that I'm a huge auditory processing person. So uh, like several other people, I'm really into books on tape and listening to the process that. Um, the thing that I think um, was a big difference for me, and I don't know if it's been touched on a lot, is that multi-sensory. Not just hearing the text, but also seeing it and having it tracked in multi-colors. Um, I found that after many years, I was much more processing to things that were in yellow backgrounds. I know somebody said that they use black and white text. Um, I found that it's very helpful for sensitivity. Um, I also found that even though I have no visual difficulties, uh, anything in yellow tends to help full and make me focus on it. I also know that I like highlighted colors in green. And just having those small changes have vastly improved my ability to process the information that I receive. Um, and then, of course, like a lot of people have spoken, um, I don't have any difficulty with physically typing. I can type quite quickly. But uh, articulating myself verbally is very easy. Um, but spelling anything is incredibly difficult. Um, one of my favorite stories, uh, I have a friend uh, who constantly reminds me about the fact that I was trying to spell the word cement. I thought it was spelled cement. The number one option in the spell check um, was a semen. And suddenly now my geology paper that was supposed to be about uh, irrigation of um, actually suddenly had a lot of semen in it. And those are the kind of things that happen to individuals like me and still happens to individuals like me all the time because a spell checker is only going to give you the best options of words based on what you can spell. Um, and if you can't read the list of words, they all look the same to you. So using adaptive technology, I mean, I've used the, the word cues. Um, uh, I'll have to check out the, um, the Google one. That was kind of interesting. Um, but I've certainly used a lot of uh, word prediction programs, things like that. And they've really changed my life from the standpoint of being able to read those words. You know, I can reduce the number of errors and process significantly. I rewrote a paper in college 28 times before I submitted it at one point because I didn't have any technology and I was constantly having people rewrite it, review it, um, reprocess it for me. And, you know, it was a painful, time consuming process. Uh, I was given programs then that I could write and would read back to me. Uh, again, you know, a lot of them that have been mentioned. Uh, and it totally changed my process. I rewrote my master's thesis, 67 pages. And only um, it only took me three rewrites, and it took me less time than my freshman level 101 English class did. Uh, and a lot of it had to do with the fact that one, I could use dictation to articulate my ideas and, and give them out, but also then I could reread and reproof a lot of the things. Uh, you know, I write a sentence like "the apple fall from the tree" all the time. You know, and we tend to uh, even people that don't have disabilities tend to read what we thought we wrote, not necessarily what's there. So even adults that don't have disabilities tend to um, need a proofreaders. Where adaptive technology, I think, is amazing because it's migrated into the mainstream so much that so many of the people that I work with are no longer classifying so much of the things that I do as disability to systems, but as things that they can use in a day-to-day -day lifestyle. Um, 
you know, I used to have to process an auditory convert and do scan imagery to get my books and stuff available. Now I can buy it online on my phone and in, in minutes and seconds sometimes and upload that content. So it's viewable. Um, you know, I, a huge fan of Bookshare. Uh, I see somebody else mentioned that I use that a ton voice stream actually is on my phone and that's where I get most of my books. And it's kind of funny too, because I often have people always say, well, so you're illiterate, but you've read more books in the last year than I've read in the last 15. And I'm like, yes, I don't traditionally read the way you think I read, but I am a very well-written individual because I auditory process it. And to me, um, a lot of times I can take it in there. And it's kind of funny, even I was even yelled at as a kid because I'd have parents and aunts and uncles and nephews and um, uh, not nephews, um, nieces uh, and cousins that would read to me and they would laugh because they're like, well, you're not paying attention. And I would then spit back the last paragraph and a half they read word for word. And they're like, how can you do that? And I'm like, I need to listen in a, ma a manner that is different from other people. So one of the things that often people don't understand about individuals like myself who process our information, I literally do homework with the TV on the radio on, um, and probably doing two or three other things. I mean, I typically have three screens growing on my computer at one time. And that's how I process information. So it's not even so much a disability thing, but it, uh, the fact that people process that information so differently, we have to be open to those ideas. Um, I really like the idea that somebody else brought up about preparing things to have it in a, um, a I'm trying to think of the word, um, where it was captioned. And I'm actually the exact opposite. I would like everything provided verbally and um, often in situations where they only give it written. Um, you know, still one of my nightmares is walking into a business meeting and somebody handing me a case study that's five pages and says, hey, review this, let's talk about it. So tell me what your thoughts are. Well, now I have great apps that I can take pictures of on the fly and do auto OCR, which is optical quicker recognition, and have it read back to me right away. And that's really changed my ability to be a uh, effective member of society. But it also is often something that people are like, why do you have your phone on? Why do you have a earbud in? Why, do you, you know, see so, yeah, a lot of times you end up explaining yourself of like, okay, why are you doing this? Um, so those are a few uh, features I use, but I mean, I've used inspiration for years. I've used reading systems for years, dictation, dragon. I mean, I remember my 98 version of dragon was so frustrating. I want to throw it out the window, but I still use it to this day because it changes those abilities to have that um, communication, you know, and um, I believe one person talked about how they type everything in so that they can communicate. I also text everything too, but instead of texting it, I actually verbally articulate it using the dictation and send it via text message and then have it come back to me as text message and then have the program read it back to me. Um, and mostly because today's modern environment prefers text and written communication. And often you need a proof to have uh, a literal copy or version of the communications you're having. So those kind of had to be the adaptive uh, structures that I had to implement. Great, great. Well, there's, there was so much that you uh, contributed there, but a few thoughts that came to mind um, as you were speaking, Nick, is that it's not one size fits all, right? No. So the things that are a benefit to Rhiannon may not necessarily be a benefit to you. Um, and so that's why it's important to provide a range of options uh, so that people can find those settings, those preferences um, that work for them. And then um, another thing that you mentioned was um, invisible disabilities, uh, which I deal with as a person with a visual impairment because uh, there's assumptions that when you're legally blind that your eyes are going to move a certain way or you know, you're going to wear dark sunglasses and so on. But the fact is that when I don't have my cane, I look like everybody else. And so people don't know that you're struggling with, you know, reading or um, keeping up with content. Um, and then the other thing that was important that you mentioned is that we can read with our ears now. Yep. Right. And we can write with our voice. And the important thing is, what is the goal? And if the goal is to express yourself, it doesn't matter how you do that. If the goal is to get the information and process it and make meaning out of it, it also doesn't, uh, doesn't matter how you do that. So there was a question for you um, in terms of what uh, OCR tools you're using right now. So you want to take that question real quick? Sure. Um, I actually, on my phone, I typically use a uh, Prismo and um, a KNFP reader. 
Um, both work real well, it depends on the type of document, location I'm in, what kind of lighting I have, um, and how much time I have to process it. If it's something I have to snap several things, uh, several images with, versus if it's something that's a single page document. Or um, I actually, you know, I use it a lot, um, like a lot of the low vision people do, uh, to read science. You know, when I walk into a, a a conference you know like you guys are at there a lot of times the instructions and everything is all written up there but you know I can't read it effectively enough to be able to understand what it is so a lot of times I'll snap a, sh a picture of that and read those uh, systems that way um, I still use a computer-based one um, as well I, I'm a been a Kurzweil user since uh, 99, um, but I also do integrate a few other ones uh, like the Read Write Gold to do some pieces into Google interfaces and some other interfaces I have to work in, um, depending on the industry and the type of document I'm working on too. Nice, great, great. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I'm gonna open Thanks, it up. 